top three things in my notebook this morning, number one, the 10-year bond yield, number two, the price of oil, and number three, what is interconnected to the price of oil, which is indeed Russia. So first, let's hit on the 10-year bond yield. You know, look, you get a jobs report that's pretty much in line. I think that the forward look on jobs would be that January to March is where you start to develop the risk in energy states in terms of both jobless claims and the fall down in what has been a fantastic trend in what is called a late cycle indicator. Don't forget that at the end of an economic cycle, what looks good is employment. So again, uh, I don't think it's looking better than it looked in the last couple months, but the reality is that that is what it is. Most people who are employed by either central planning or some media outlet that is set up to cheer it on will indeed like the report, but the point is that the bond market will vote on that. Immediate term trade support is one spot eight nine percent and immediate term trade resistance is two spot one one percent. So what we have here is a series of lower highs and lower lows in bond yields. Uh, and again, I do think that that's predicting what these uh, media outlets will be talking about in January through March from an employment perspective. Point number two is oil uh, bounced and then failed. So that's a problem. Uh, yesterday I was talking about how a higher low could be good for oil. Well, that's gone. Now I have a you know, lower high and that higher low is gone. So I have immediate term trade support at 46.43. Uh, 5186 on WTI is resistance and it remains in crash formation. Uh, finally, Russia. Don't forget that most of the stock market bounces that we had in December were led by things that were counter trend. A bounce in oil, a bounce in Russia, a bounce in junk bonds. And when you get those leading the bounce, that's that's really low value or low quality bouncing. And again, uh, the follow through on Russia this morning is a 5% stock market drop. That has everything to do with this thing called deflation. So we'll reiterate that this morning. Global deflation remains the number one global macro risk that you should have been prepared for, should continue to prepare for, and will be quite happy to be prepared for uh, going forward. So those are your top three things.